Father, what a great reminder of your love for those that you would save. Father, we praise you that you loved us first. Father, now as we come to this time in the service where we remember what your son accomplished, who your son is, Father, I pray, Lord, that our worship would be sweet. Father, we would bring you glory. And Lord, I pray for my friends that are here, Lord, that this time would be an encouragement as we strive to live a life that is pleasing to you. Father, just thank you for this body of believers here in Tempe. And I pray these things in the beautiful name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, there's going to be some men bringing, uh, handing out Bibles. If you don't have a Bible, you need one, raise your hand. They will put a Bible in your hand. If you don't own a Bible, it's a gift from us to you. You can take that Bible home with you. As they're handing out Bibles, if you would open your Bible to Colossians chapter 1. But as you're turning to the book of Colossians, I would like to remind you of the significance of our time that we spend in our service, the time that we celebrate the Lord's Supper. Paul teaches the Corinthian church that the Lord's Supper is a reminder of Jesus. It's a reminder of his perfect life. It's a reminder of his horrific death. It's the, the, the cracker and the juice represents the body that he gave up for us. It's a reminder of his resurrection, that he conquered sin. And importantly to remember too that as the believer takes communion, it's a proclamation of these gospel truths. With the instructions in your mind, let's take a look at what Colossians says about Jesus, our Savior. We'll be looking at Colossians chapter 1, verses 13, 14, and 15. As you look at your Bible, you will notice this section uh, in the area of verses 13, 14, 15 may say something like the centrality of Christ, may say the incomparable Christ. This passage is all about Jesus. It's a section about Jesus, and it's written, the, the verb form used, they're statements of fact, they're promises. Let us read together verse 13, 14, and 15. For he, that's God, rescued us from the dominion of darkness. That's hell. That's Satan's kingdom. And transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He that's Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. There's so much more in this text. I would, would love for us to have the time to look at the entire passage, but we're going to now go back and just look at these few verses. In verse 13, rescued. God rescued us. Again, a, a reminder, this is a statement of fact. Christ's death on the cross moves us, it transfers us from Satan's kingdom to our Savior's kingdom. Again, Scripture using the verb in an indicative form says, Christ we have, in Christ we have redemption, forgiveness of sins. This, this is a fact of what Jesus has accomplished. Verses 13 and 14 tell us what Jesus has done, and verse 15 tells us who Jesus is. Again, the verb is the indicative. It's a statement of fact. And it simply says, 
Jesus is God. It says Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. What an amazing God. Christian, as you prepare your heart and your mind, remembering our Savior, you should be awed. You should be amazed at what the one true God over everything has accomplished. He has rescued you. He has transferred you. And he has granted you the reward of redemption. This time of communion is a time of remembrance. And being the first day of the week, I, I hope these verses would serve as a reminder to you throughout the week uh, of the fact of who Jesus Christ is and what he has accomplished. Believer, if you are here and if you are in a season of, of weariness in your walk with the Lord, if you diagnose your own spiritual health and you're not content, will you spend some time looking at verses that are gospel-rich in indicative form of what has already been accomplished? For the believer, this should amaze you what he has accomplished. If you don't know where to go in the Bible, send me an email. I'll help you find areas in Scripture that will be healthy for you to renew your mind of what Jesus has accomplished. Where your place is as a child of the King. Perhaps you're hearing you, you don't know what I'm talking about. Perhaps you've never come to saving faith. We are so glad you're here. It's a privilege to have you here. But we would want you to know the truth of what Jesus accomplished on the cross. But this is a time for us that are proclaiming Jesus' death and resurrection. So when the elements come, if that's not your testimony, just allow them to pass you by. We don't do that to ask that of you to embarrass you. But this is truly a time for the Christian to proclaim what has already been accomplished. The men are going to bring elements. The, the cracker represents Jesus' body. The cup represents his blood. And when you're prepared your heart, please take communion on your own. Men, will you please serve us?